Ben's coming into the world was very interesting. His delivery was very stressful. Brendan's cord was wrapped around his neck three times. He was purple. He was sunny side up, so he was looking up. So it was stressful, but it was joyous at the same time because he was our first baby. He wasn't hitting the milestones. He didn't crawl until he's about 14 months old, didn't walk until he's about 18 months old. He would always look up. Now we know that he was actually having seizures. Back then, we didn't know. He actually was not diagnosed until post-military. I believe he was three and a half. The doctor, once she saw Brendan, she said, if you don't mind me asking, she said, I don't want to offend you guys or anything, but have you guys ever thought about getting him tested for autism? And then um, that was an emotional moment, to say yeah, the least, uh, because I was in denial, because I, I was a dad who's thinking I'm about to raise a professional athlete here. One of these brown sandals. We were able to get him into a, uh, a developmental school called the Aspen Center in uh, Raleigh, North Carolina. That was good for him. Yes, I'll tell you that. definitely. And that's where we discovered yeah. his love for dogs. Yep, he met his first dog there and Brendan was mute all the way up until about almost five. But there, where he said his first words, they gave the ball to Brendan, Brendan threw it, the dog caught it, and he said, good job! And they said, <gasps> Did he just say good job? Did he just talk? Yay! He just talked, and we still have the video to this day. Good job. Good job. Did he just say good job? Good job. Right now, the only thing that he is diagnosed with is just the severe autism and then the um, intractable epilepsy, where, you know, so his seizures went from just once a week to two a week, and it even got as bad as to 10 a week, you know, multiple times a day. Um, and so. the medication hasn't worked yeah. either, and that's why they say it's, they it's call this intractable because there's no treatment plan that they've tried to put that together works. that has actually worked. The puppy would help him out, it would be a nice companion for him, and then we also looked at different type of breeds that can sense seizures and a golden doodle was in the top five. We said, look, Brendan, you have a puppy. And Aww. Brendan bust out laughing. And Brendan wasn't really laughing that much. He was pretty low energy, just from all the seizures and the surgery. And so then they put the puppy on his lap and he was sitting there and he was still smiling while the puppy was like licking his hands and face. And we knew, oh yeah, this puppy is gonna love you. And you're gonna love this puppy. Anytime Brendan starts to seize, he will hear it and start, he'll take off running to the room even before we hear, you know, the actual noise, the wail that Brendan lets out. And he'll run in there and he is crying to try to get up on the bed. And sometimes we'll put him up there and he will just lick Brendan to life. <laughs> but I think he's doing that because he's trying to alert him, trying to get him to respond. We don't like to accept anything from anybody. We're, we're givers, we like to give to other people. And so it's like for somebody else to show their humanity and give to us in this capacity, it's, it's overwhelming to be honest. We, we don't take it for granted. Like this is this is special to us and I think it, it, it's life changing. So I'm, I'm really appreciative and I'm, I'm sure the kids are as well. I mean, they're not appreciative when they have to clean up after the dog, <laughs> but everything else with all the love, the kisses and the pictures. <laughs> Thank you Pluto, now I gotta go wipe this Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.